Okay, so I'd like to show you guys how to manage your scenes as they become more complicated and really keep all of your assets very organized in such a manner that you can continue working on them individually and still have them be instanced across a scene that is made up of hundreds or thousands of objects. Um, it's very easy for your blend files to become out of hand in terms of their organizational complexity if you don't have a good structure set up to keep your stuff organized. So I thought that it would be reasonable to show you how to take something um, like this metaphorical and actual building block and be able to uh, achieve some greater complexity that you can then have in a scene. So. Um, I think most people at this point are probably familiar with the concept of a scene in Blender, but a scene is essentially just a top-level collection. Collections are new, uh, they're introduced inside of Blender 2.8, but they're basically just directory structures where you can put collections of objects. So if I wanted to, I could have a collection, call this bricks, move this cube inside of it, and you see now it basically just behaves as a folder. I can hide it, I can hide the whole thing, hide things within it, collapse it. Uh, a scene is just the same idea but at an even higher level. Um, a scene, if I go create a new scene, you see that there's just nothing in it at all. If I were to add a sphere inside of here, this is now existing completely independently of my other collection of objects. So that's, that's really the gist of complexity within a single blend file. But what I want to show you guys is how to then take this uh, so that you can distribute this complexity across multiple files and keep your stuff very organized. So what I want to show you is how I can reference this brick in a file that is going to instance multiple bricks uh, as well as other assets. So I'm going to hop over to a empty file I created called scene and you see I deleted the default cube and there's just a camera and a light here. Um, so this is going to be the place where I'm pulling in assets from other blend files. So I'm going to leverage collections to try to keep some organization within here and show you the different ways that I can pull in assets from other files. So I'm going to create one directory called assets and this is where I want to keep the things that I've imported into here so I'm going to do um, two, one of two of these options here um, the first one I'm going to show you is probably the more straightforward and less interesting one which is append um, and you see inside of this directory um, this is my brick this brick blend is the one where I had that previous object so if I go inside of object, you see cube here. Now, this is a reason why you want to name objects in the tree here in a way that is actually meaningful, particularly if you're gonna be importing them across files. So what I'm actually gonna do is go back to this brick and take this cube here and rename it to something that will make it easy to organize later. So let's call this concrete brick. I'm gonna save this, go back to my scene, and now when I go to do append, um, I'm going to now choose from the brick object. Now it's called concrete brick. And that's much more easy for us to keep organized here. So um, you notice that I did append. So what that does is it creates an actual duplicate of that mesh data and that means that I can go in here and do things in edit mode. I can scale this, make adjustments in object mode. Um, I've just made a straight copy of that. Um, that gives me flexibility, but the downside is, is that this has no longer um, maintained its association to the object in the brick blend file. So if I were to go back and make changes to that, um, those would not be persisted here. Um, so this is still useful, but there's a more interesting option here that I think is more commonly what you're going to be using and that's to do link. So if I now do the same steps but have this be linked you'll see that this shows up a little bit differently here um, and it shows the chain to show that this is still linked to the file. So if I take this linked one now you'll see that if I'm pushing G can't move it, can't scale it, 
can't tab into edit mode. I can't make any changes to this. But the upside of this is that I can make changes to the original file and they will be persisted here. Um, so that is a useful differentiator. Now I am going to create a staging folder and that will be where I'm actually instancing these assets to make my scene. So assets is just where I'm importing them and then in staging is where I'll be placing them around. So um, something that most of you probably know is that there are multiple ways of duplicating an object in Blender. So if I were to do Shift D, this is very much like if I had done Append in that I can now make edits um, inside of edit mode to this brick. I can scale it, rotate it, do whatever. Um, and it has lost its association to the initial linked brick. Um, this does have its utility for the changes that you actually want to make on a one-off instance of it. But um, the option that behaves more like the link is to create a linked duplicate. So if I do Alt-D, um, I am not able to tab into edit mode like with this linked one, but I am able to move it in object mode. So doing a linked import and a linked duplicate is essentially what you'd want to be able to do if you just want to instance this object around your scene, still be able to rotate it, scale it, just not be able to make um, edits to the mesh data. And um, one of the nice things about this is you can still do non-destructive modifiers on here if I want to add a subdivision surface or an array. Um, I still maintain a lot of the flexibility while maintaining that mapping back to the original brick. So this is a straight duplicate, this is a linked duplicate, and this is a linked import. And I'll show you what happens now if I go back to the original brick file and make a change. So. If I go into edit mode and just raise this corner up and save, if I go to the scene, you'll see that the linked import and the linked dupl duplicate both had their mesh data updated, whereas this one did not. So there's definitely utility to both of those, but this is what we're going to be using most here. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back in set that back to how it was so here i have my linked import and staging is where i would want to be able to link these around so like I did before I'll do a link duplicate and we'll move this into staging so assets is really just used to house your linked imports and then I could go ahead and you know duplicate this all around here um, so this is cool right I can go I can do a linked import of a log and it will import it into my assets directory. And now I can likewise do a linked duplicate of the log. Move that into staging and we hide our assets again. So what's cool about this is that I now can just instance these all around my scene, make minor adjustments, whatever. And if I want to go back into the original file and update the texture, or do anything, um, that all will work correctly. So one thing that you can see that's useful here is the importance of scale. In your original file, it now makes a lot more sense to try to get the scale of all of this correct so that as you import and instance these around, you're keeping some kind of standard um, it matters a lot more once you start referencing these assets across files and want to keep it somewhat consistent. Um, so if you're not familiar with how scale, scale works here, if you go into the scene tab here, there are units and I've chosen metric and unit scale of one um, so that these are all measured in meters. So what I then did in my brick 
file is I looked up the dimensions of a brick in meters and I measured this out to be roughly correct. So uh, obviously I can go in and make adjustments for the cases where I'd like it to be a little bit different, but uh, overall if you're instancing these, you want you know steps to be sized to the character that you import, etc. and it makes a lot more sense to maintain the units in that case. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And um, the last thing I'll show you is how you can build up complexity by adding these intermediary assets, such as a brick wall, for example. And this in this scene, I've done exactly the same thing. I did a linked import of that concrete block, and I just added an array modifier on it. Um, and then I just offset it manually to show that um, this is uh, these are linked duplicates by virtue of being arrays, and then these are linked duplicates of this by me having just done Alt-D and offsetting it manually. Um, so if I were to go into the brick um, file, it would update all of these. And then I could go into my scene with this now object of intermediary complexity and be able to import that. Um, and how I'm doing that is that I took all of those link duplicates that I did and I added them into a collection. So you see I've organized this the same as I would if it were a scene, which is that I have my asset, which is the concrete block. That's the only thing that I've imported externally. And then in staging, I assembled them to create this. So I created a collection called brick wall. And when I go into my scene, I'm not just limited to doing imports on objects. I can go and do link, find the brick wall, and rather than going into object here, I'll go into collection, and there is brick wall. So it is now here inside of assets, and I do Alt D to do a link duplicate of it. We'll take this inside of staging, hide assets, and I can now do link duplicates of this all over my scene. So this could be me building up walls, or I could have a tower if I have some kind of castle that I'm putting everywhere. Um, and it lets you just build up things of more and more complexity. If I do th go through this entire process and build a house, and I'm making you know, King's Landing in Game of Thrones, I can then take a few of those houses and instance them around inside of King's Landing. You can just take this as far as you'd like. Um, and what's cool is that so long as they're objects, you can continue adding modifiers to it. And uh, the one real downside of this is that uh, once you hit, reach these interme intermediary objects, which are actually collections, you lose the ability to add modifiers onto it. So I think one really cool feature that Blender could potentially add is that you know for me to be able to array this or to be able to add a curve modifier onto this collection, um, it would be really great if it was capable of treating a collection as an object. But other than that, I think you can see the utility of this, and you can essentially build up a whole city or you know single character and be pulling in assets from external files. So that's it.